past year, we have seen six occurrences where Bitcoin has dropped 20% or more. The average return two weeks later, 24%. And four weeks later, Bitcoin gains 81%. That according to Genesis Trading. But warnings from the SEC could spell trouble for investors. A regulator raising the alarm about Bitcoin ETFs and mutual funds, saying that there are a number of significant investor protection issues that need to be examined before sponsors begin offering these funds to investors. Let's talk more about investing in Bitcoin with more regulation on the go with Ari Paul, CIO of Block Tower Capital, previously a portfolio manager at the University of Chicago Endowment. Ari, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Seema. Let's talk about regulation and the strongly worded letter from the SEC. If we do see more regulation, not just from South Korea and China, but the United States as well, that certainly makes investing in this space more challenging. Certainly, I think it's probably the single biggest risk to investing in cryptocurrency is regulation. So why are you doing it? Well, so with, with great risk can come great returns potentially. And what's really interesting about the space to me is that they're idiosyncratic risks and idiosyncratic returns. So as part of a broader portfolio, it's a very attractive source of risk and return. If South Korea does in fact ban all cryptocurrencies, and we're talking about South Korea, one of the largest Bitcoin markets in the world, where do you see Bitcoin going from here? Well, if there was an outright ban, I would expect a crash. And what does a crash mean? Uh, maybe we return to the September lows of, say, 3,000. That would be an extreme case. But we don't, do not expect a full ban, ban in South Korea. How are your investments in Bitcoin and maybe some of the alternative coins doing right now? So we, we invest across the entire investable universe. We don't right. necessarily own any Bitcoin. Um, Almost all of cryptocurrency has been down kind of together. Correlation's been very high, sure. so most things were down 50%. Uh, so we, we're active traders. We move in and out. But the assets that we do hold were down a bit less than Bitcoin. So more specifically, the last time we spoke on Fast Money, you actually made a bet through the futures markets, that a, a million-dollar bet that Bitcoin would go to, what, 50000 Sure. So with a yeah. very small percentage of our assets, sure. we bought $50,000 strike calls. And, and what frankly, have you done with that position since you're an active trader? Uh, so that option trade, we're probably holding till expiration. So I think so it you're almost give it a chance to. You Absolutely. still think that it is a possibility that Bitcoin will go back to 50k? Absolutely. Go up to 50k. So I bought the calls partly because I thought this was likely. I mm -hmm. actually expected a, a public call I made was that in 2018 Bitcoin would hit both 6,000 and 60,000. So by owning the calls, I own less outright cryptocurrency, which means in a downturn like this, I'm losing less. Which one will it hit first, 60,000 or 6,000? I still don't know. So it seems like 6,000 is more likely at this point, given the recent downturn. But I, it's it's still I, I still don't know. But the proliferation of cryptocurrencies, not just Bitcoin, we're seeing the emergence of new ones: Ripple, Litecoin, Ether. Where should one put their money? I mean, which one offers the better risk profile? I, that, that's a very tough question. Um, I think if an investor is only going to invest in, in a couple or, or, or one or a few, I think the Coinbase coins are attractive. Um, they tend to have real communities. They're less um, uh, pumped artificially. There, there's, there's more of a grassroots kind of broad ownership. So I think Bitcoin is still a good long-term bet. If we are to believe that regulation is going to increase, then uh, should we be more concerned or less concerned about the likes of a Monero or Zcash, the privacy coins? Mm -hmm. That's a, a great and very sophisticated question. I don't think regulators are yet differentiating between different cryptocurrencies from a regulatory perspective. I think that's probably still a ways away. You had a high paying, nice job at an endowment as a portfolio manager. You said no to that to start this fund in digital currencies. Why do that when this field, this space is so unpredictable? So in the endowment world and as investors as a whole, we're looking for alpha, right? So the entire market has been increasing, but there's a question of, I can tell you in endowments around the country, the question is how are we going to earn a decent forward-looking return? Equities feel rich, real estate feels rich. So here you have a, uh, forget about source of, of beta, forget about source of return. It's an inefficient market. It's a market where an active manager could generate returns. And when I, when I surveyed the landscape, there were very few funds in the space seven months ago and very, very few that were professional. So given your experience, uh, do you think that endowments and other institutional investors like that will eventually get into the space? They will eventually. So they've been doing a lot of work. But the mandates are pre preventing them right now, correct? No, they can no. invest. In fact, some endowments have actually uh, have invested both indirectly and directly. Mm -hmm. um, there's some endowments, uh, at least one that has invested in a cryptocurrency project, so not a cryptocurrency itself. Right. Um, and many of them are invested in venture capital firms that are invested in us, in other funds, as well as in cryptocurrency directly. So it's not just the South Korean grandma who's investing <laughs> right now. I mean, no. the institutions so are, are, are finally get, getting in. Yeah. Most of the large family offices in the country are right. in cryptocurrency. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC.